any absinthe teas, I guess. <laughs> There's be nothing here. Ha! City is sleeper in them. Now I have to say, <clears throat> I'm not that familiar with absinthe, but build it up. sometimes I can't be breathe for all the build it up. I'm reasonably certain that absinthe would not make you more alert. So now that we're neutral, once I'm out of his territory, I can stop worrying about getting spotted by him, which is nice. So with that accomplished, let's get the coins out of this apartment. I don't know where the watchman is yet, so up is a pretty good direction to go. Uh-oh. Well, now I know. I think he's about to head over to toward the old quarter entrance, which is a great spot for me to have him, frankly. But inside this apartment, another pile of copper coins is worth another 25. He's not headed toward old quarter. He's headed the way that makes trouble. Okay, well, let's go get the water arrow out of the sewers. That'll kill some time while we wait for him to patrol back this direction. I might have enough time to get this gas arrow. And then wait him out in this doorway. There he finally goes. So we'll get out behind him. And get to the rest of the docks. This guy's near the end point of his patrol. Let's get the fire arrow out of the torch and head over to where the abysmal gale used to be. You might be surprised to see, though, when you cross over, the Abysmal Gale is gone, as are the two city watchmen who have been here every day so far, which means we don't have to worry about pickpocketing the health potion. So get the water arrow out of the pipe and the two broadheads off of the crate. Looting the tavern is a lot simpler without any watchmen. Let's just get the fire arrow out of the fireplace. And let's go upstairs to get the jade ring and the copper fork. So get the copper fork off the shelf. And get the jade ring out of the chest. And with that accomplished, we are finished in the docks. Which means, if you're really paying attention, we're finished for now. There's nothing left Good to see you. except to go ahead to you. and go to the Keeper Library. That, of course, is going to trigger a cutscene. And I'll explain more a little bit later about what's about to happen. So we are headed to the library now. I'll just go through South Quarter 
to Stone Market Plaza to get there. very happy today because I've had a significant caffeine upgrade. The 7-Eleven nearby, for a long time I've been having to drink Nas nice energy night. drink, which is, you know, it's pretty good, but the thing I don't like about it is that it's caloric. I prefer the sugar-free variety of energy drinks, but it had been the only one with enough caffeine for me to bother with. My favorite are Double Caffeine Rockstars, the ones with 250 megs of caffeine a pop, which have been missing from my store for the past several weeks, but today they reappeared and it made me very, very happy. I highly recommend them because I know that the demographic of my viewership is probably one that consumes a lot of caffeine. I guess I should say my favorite energy drink is Spike, because it's zero calories, it's 300 megs of caffeine, and on top of all that, it has the virtue of actually tasting delicious, which is lacking in most energy drinks, to put it mildly. But I can never find that anywhere, except at a 7-Eleven way over in Fort Collins, Colorado. My hometown. So you'll recall that the fallen clock tower has broken off our usual access to the Keeper Library, so we're kind of just going to have to find our way around this guy. He happens to be patrolling away right now, so let's slip in right here and just wait in the bushes until he patrols past us. Then we can get into the library behind him. Now before I actually go into the library, let me talk about what's going to happen next. And I'll do a real save because it's worth it. There's going to be a cutscene. <clears throat> After that, we're going to reappear in a new area of the city, the Old Quarter. In addition to that, the cutscene is going to trigger the arrival of the Keeper Enforcers throughout the entire city. Now the Enforcers are fun. The Enforcers create total chaos because they kill everything they see. They don't, although they're supposed to be incredibly skilled, stealthy assassins, they really aren't stealthy at all. They create total chaos in the streets. They kill everything they see. Everything tries to kill them. So the two days that they're out in the streets, day six and day seven, it's complete chaos. And you pretty much, and you might recall that the appearance of corpses turns everyone hostile to you. So you have to hide from civilians in order to avoid triggering alerts in a way you don't usually have to. The bodies discovered count is going to skyrocket as a side effect of their melees. When I got to the end of day six in my practice run, there were 13 new bodies discovered. My total jumped from four to 17. On top of that, I notice that it only really happens with the enforcers. So I wonder if there's some kind of programming overlap between recognition of an enforcer and recognition of Garrett. I don't know exactly how it works, but I do know that once the enforcers are in the streets, even if you're never seen and never heard, if you're close enough to someone who goes into combat mode because of an enforcer, they'll make comments that indicate they know where you are. They'll run right up to wherever you're hiding, so you have to be very well hidden in order to actually avoid being seen or heard. And most importantly, even though no one actually caught you, your time's caught statistic will tick up every time that happens. 
So, I'll alert you when I see a time that I think it's happened, and after the next mission, my total times caught will probably have a few ticks in it. It went all the way up to five after my practice run of day six. Just be aware, the point of what I'm saying is that you can get caught in the statistics without ever really being caught because of the enforcers. So with that, let's trigger the cutscene and let's start the party. Interpreter Katika. <gasps> Katika. Keeper Orland, Katika is dead, M murdered. I went to bring her the copy of Moran she requested, but then her door was open. She never leaves it open. I looked in and and Garrett has killed Interpreter Katika. You say. Seize him and bring him to the council room. This is the only murder in our ranks since these halls were founded by the first of our ancestors. But Garrett had no reason to kill Kataka. Has he not walked in line with the prophecies before? Yet some say the prophecies point to him as brethren and betrayer. Surely he knew that the answer Garrett killed Constantine. Yes, and Karis as well. His hands long... A thief. And no stranger to murder is not match the manner in which Kataka was killed. How could Garrett have been the Remember one? Remember that we asked Garrett to join us, to share his knowledge and skill. But now we turn upon him without proof. Broken and destroys the clock tower. Petty vandalism Notice is that what the clock tower does appear that way from some angles. We must consider the implications. If that prophecy Any refers to one the of the clock tower is irrelevant. The matter at hand is murder done by one who we accepted as our guest and brother. Have you anything to say before sentence is passed? You haven't listened to anyone else yet, Orland. Why start now? Silence! You are declared guilty of Interpreter Kataka's murder. Your punishment will be determined by the Council. Now remove him! I regret to inform you that Garrett has escaped. Very good. Call together the Keeper Enforcers. They will track him down and erase our problem. So now we will appear in Old Quarter, a brand new district of the city, and we actually have two areas. In addition to the Old Quarter streets, we now have access to Fort Ironwood, so we'll clear it all. There are your friends. Nothing to stop us. If anyone tries to interfere with our mission, destroy So there are the enforcers. Let's see what our new objective is. We've completed Return to Keeper Library to see if Interpreter Katika has discovered the identity of the Brethren and Betrayer. Our new objective is get to your fence here in Old Quarter to see if he can help you before you are killed by the Keeper Assassins. Ramian's place is to the east. You'll notice that our restriction regarding the Keepers is now gone. So I'll do a real save. Being in Old Quarter, we now have 
three new access to three new rust mites and three new cornerstones, so we'll be sure to point those out. But at first, you start in a pretty good shadow to wait out these two enforcers. The one will head off down the street, the other will eventually just settle stationary in the doorway back to the keeper compound facing out. So the first rust mite in Old Quarter is right here by the keeper compound. You can see it here in the street. It will probably alert the enforcers if you shoot it, but there it is. That would be the tenth rust mite overall if you're hunting them. Now, let's get a new note. This keeper door can't be used. Something must be wrong with the glyphs. So that gives us the note that the keeper door glyphs aren't working right now. You will need to find alternate routes. So it's important to have the keeper storeroom in Stone Market Plaza cleared before you go to the library. The enforcers are using telepathy to communicate silently. I don't think they know I can hear them. So that way leads to Stone Market Plaza. You see the enforcer there. So we head this direction. There's another enforcer stationary staring right at the entrance to the tavern which we need to get into and clear we're gonna have to rely on their uh, hostility to the hammerites to get into the tavern but eventually some hammers are gonna come out of Fort Ironwood which I'm facing right now and there he goes Wounded. But with that, we should be able to get into the tavern. <laughs> so they're over fighting the Hammerites. When you get into the tavern, get the health potion out of this open chest in the southeast corner. Of course, you can hear the enforcers anywhere, wherever they might happen to be, and they make the same kind of alerts whether it's you or anyone else. So let's read this. Stop! No patrons beyond this point. The management. Alright, let's just make sure she doesn't alert to us. Down, up, down, left. Right. Up. They're still fighting outside. So when you... I knew it. Is violence really the answer? She's hearing combat outside, I think. Betrayal! Proceed with the search for the betrayal. So in here, there's another health potion, two broadhead arrows on the northern table. On the southern table, we can find one bottle of fine wine and two silver goblets, worth 150 each, respectively. That's it for the tavern, so let's try and creep out of here without, oh, looks like she ran away when she heard the fighting. That's fine. Uh-oh. Looks like the Enforcers won that fight, but more Hammerites will spawn in and they'll pull him away from his post again. Which is what we'll wait for. We also have to be careful if the uh, bartender comes back. Ha! You just my mission. Praise the builder. Thou art slain and tis all blood. Tis foul play, most assuredly. Now the Hammerites are still hostile to me, so 
I need to wait until he heads into Fort Ironwood, having solved my enforcer problem no, for me. Don't touch it. Never touch a dead body. Yeah, the bartender is gonna alert to me now. Blood. There must have been a fight or something here. Since she has clearly seen some dead bodies, so. When they decide to finish their search, she'll come back in here. <sighs> it's nothing. Why did I waste my time? Not like a barmaid has a lot of free time to waste. There she is. I'm glad no one killed her. I I just don't like it when innocent people die. Garrett and I have that in common. So much blood. Uh, she couldn't quite make it behind her own bar, but I guess that's all right. Let's peek. He's been killed. Somebody do something. Let's try and get out the door now. If you can get back to this shadow here, you're in pretty good shape. Alright, we got in and out of the tavern without getting caught. That's worth a real save to me. I'm still not going to mess with bodies. So what I want to do next is climb up this wall to the west of the tavern door. Jump onto this awning here. No one can see me up here, which is good, although there are enforcers on the rooftops, so we still need to be careful. Jump up, jump across and grab the gas arrow. Now, let me just show you the rooftops. There are some good rooftops in Old Quarter. Eh, they don't call it the Thieves Highway for nothing. I do wish the rooftop network was as expansive and awesome as it is in Thief 2 in Life of the Party, but it is not to be. So for our purposes, we'll just head back down to the streets. We'll head through this direction. See a dead hammer right here. I think it's a hammer. Right here is the old quarter crime report, which for now, of course, should be all zeros, since we haven't been here before. Oh, there's another enforcer fight going on to our southeast. We'll get into the... We're gonna head into this city watch post right here. There are two broadhead arrows on the table, and a journal here we can read. Diary of R. Hawknor. Tuesday. The whole thing's running smoother than I could have hoped. Every night I show up, they hand over the stuff. I'm happy, and them? Well, they get to stay in business. It's a sweet arrangement, and the best part is I'm the sole beneficiary of the deal. Don't have to add it to the City Watch pool, because they don't know about it. See, it takes real brains to pull off a good, profitable scam. And if nothing else, I got real brains. Wednesday. I was just thinking to myself, why not drink a little of the stuff, say every third bottle or so. Won't cut into my profits too much, and besides, I'd just end up spending the dough on liquor anyway. See, now that's real brains again. Probably just saved myself a bunch of coin. That gives us a note, letting us know that... Hawknor, a city watch guard, is extorting the Old Quarter Tavern for an expensive bottle of wine every night. So much like the landlord blackmail note that's alerting us to a piece of loot which will be here every day, this 150 gold bottle of wine. There's also a flash bomb on the shelf. And now that's it for the watch station, so... I have the betrayer here. You deserve to find it. You really don't have the betrayer. You have interfered. Extremely. Ah! Ah! 
What's going on over there, huh? Who did this? This is murder. So we still have total chaos going on, as you can probably tell. Uh, just come on out so I can fight you. Let's get in behind him. Just gotta figure out where that noise came from. While the city watchman is distracted, is a great time to do two things. Inside this cart. Why are you following me? I'm not. Inside this cart, there are two silver dishes worth 75 each. Here, on the corner of the gate to Aldale, which we still can't get through, is the first cornerstone for Old Quarter. That would be the tenth cornerstone overall. And over here we have Carmen's place, the Old Quarter shop. Welcome, welcome. Step into my store. I call it Carmen's Place, because that's me. I'm Carmen. The Hammerites think I sell ladies undergarments or something. I don't know where they got that impression, but it keeps them away. So everybody's happy, yeah? She has the last practice lock, the gold one, for a thousand gold. And she's also, finally, the merchant who sells gas arrows, if you're interested. <laughs> You, Cap? Oh, damn it. Hell's bells! Ah. I was worried about that. We should hit Carmen's first and just not let her talk, grab the practice lock, and leave. Because if the city watchman is facing this direction, we have to have that torch out, otherwise, he'll notice us. Ah. Oh, too late. My mistake. I guess that means I'll just put the torch out. Don't think I imagined that. Good lord, okay. I guess we're just gonna have to try being quick and hope for the best. And if not, I may have to skip buying the gold practice lock till tomorrow. And honestly, that won't kill me. Welcome, welcome. Step into my... Good. Got it. No problem. Hello? Who's there? Oh, he's seeing another body. That's the problem. Oh boy, the area has pretty thoroughly populated with guards, I have to say. Hmm, nothing here. Guess I am a little jumpy. I'm just trying to take things more in stride. So up these stairs is the fences shop we're supposed to get to, which is essentially where I'd like to go next, but before I do that, we'll creep to the left of it. Something. Over here, we've got a gas arrow and a note. Last wishes of Morsey Blander. Being of sound mind and failing body, I hereby set down on paper my last will and testament, for my possessions of which there are few that they be given to charity as I have no family. For my entombment I wish only to be buried with my map, my architectural layout of the Shale Bridge Cradle, the highlight of the entire game and indeed for me the entire Thief series, but I'm getting ahead of myself, we're not there yet. The design of that great building was my life's work. Additionally, I wish for an ordinary burial with no specifications, except that I have a fondness for the catacombs underneath the Hammerite Ford if there is room. And if there is time, I would consider it quite satisfactory if someone were to say a few words at my funeral about the Shalebridge Cradle, something pleasant. Perhaps that its design is most sublime. Was a false alarm. <clears throat> we will learn that there is very little 
one could say about the Shalebridge Cradle that is pleasant, but I'm still getting ahead of myself. Now we have another note which says that a map of the Shalebridge Cradle is kept in the architect's grave in the catacombs under Fort Ironwood. Pretty straightforward. Let's head into the fences shop now. Down, up, down, left, right, up. Green alert from the rooftop enforcer. I think we can avoid that easily enough. Oh dang, I thought I had, uh, saved after getting the gas arrow. Oh well, I guess I don't have to read the note aloud at least. Oh, okay. Well that's good to know. I thought that the green alert the one time was because the enforcer at the docks gate had spotted the city watchman, but no, it was the rooftop enforcer spotting me. So I guess it's a good thing I hadn't saved, actually. Let's wait for him to leave. That's the problem, other problem with the enforcers. He will use the shadows. He will use the stealth. He will it's very difficult to tell if they're alerting to you or to something else. I'll get the gas arrow and the note. I'll wait till I spot him again, and then I'll run out, pick the lock, and get into the fences. He is not here at present. I do not sense him. Alright, good. Now it's time to make our move. Up, down, up, left, right, up. Or down, up, down, left, right, up. Sorry. Here we are in Ramian's house. Dead. I guess Ramian isn't going to be much help after all. So our objectives have changed. The objective, get to your fence here in Old Quarter to see if he can help you before you are killed by the Keeper Assassins, Ramian's places to the east, is cancelled. Our new objective is search for clues in your fence's shop about what you should do next. Well, first we should loot it. So get the fire arrow out of the fireplace, the oil flask off the shelf, a flash bomb on the bookshelf over here. On the table is one broadhead arrow or noisemaker arrow, excuse me. If we move around back, we can find two flash bombs, one gas bomb on this shelf to the right. Over to the left, we can find another noisemaker and an explosive mine. That's all awesome. He is found, cut off all possible escape groups. And uh, on top of the bookshelf to the left, a note, Garrett. Return to your dwelling in South Quarter. Trust us, we will help you. We cannot risk saying anything further, a friend. So that completes the objective. Search for clues in your fence's shop about what you should do next. And our new objectives... Go to your building in South Quarter as instructed by the mysterious note. After you enter your building, search around for clues about what's going on. So... We'll do that eventually, but first... Let's check out Fort Ironwood. There's a lot to do in there. Very good. <coughs> Excuse me. I am a very loud sneezer. I apologize if that alarmed you.
Might as well grab that broadhead. It only exists from the fight. Somebody fired it, but still. So there are the guards. I find it easiest. Kept that job. Maybe I'd have a nice place here. I find it easiest just to wait until the timing works out and head straight through the arch. We are now in Hammerite territory. I mean, doesn't matter because they're hostile anyway. But get the moss arrow right here in the bushes out in front. And note that. I'll let you know as soon as I actually track it down. We want to head over past the main entrance. There, on that corner, in front of the main door, is the second old quarter cornerstone. That would be the 11th cornerstone overall. Now, you want to get past the fort, Climb up this wall at the top we find a gargoyle with two jade in his eyes worth a hundred each that is it for old quarter except for one rust mite I haven't shown you yet so my preferred entry oh Garrett I prefer to enter Fort Ironwood through the second floor balcony so I just want to get on that wooden edging and follow it around. There we go. No one should see you up here. Make sure you land on the pipe. You can creep down silently and you really don't want to get stuck between it and the wooden edging or you won't be able to get up. So, once you get to the balcony, you just head right in. And in the interest of Supreme, I'm going to click no, get as far in as I can, back up, and shut the door. Then, I can head forward into the mist and enter Fort Ironwood. Fort Ironwood has a special place in my heart because it houses the game's only hammer haunts. I think they were woefully underused in Thief 2 and Thief 3 because to me they're the scariest monster in the game. The sounds that accompany them are just incredible. But they do exist in Fort Ironwood, the only two in the t game. So we'll get to visit them today. First things first, we have a conversation to listen to. Past brother Oliver arrived at a solution. Nay, and meanwhile the room dost become more rank by the hour. Tis true. We must bury his body soon, else the woman and all of us will be consumed by noxious vapors. But what choice have we, brother Rivet? The undead return so quickly after we smite them. Thou speakest aright. The burial canst not proceed till we discover what has caused them to return so often. And perhaps I should have spoken before, but I swore I did see a dark figure disappear from the graveyard as I approached. But when I checked the spot, it was only a tangle of briars. Thou must inform Brother Oliver. Thou hast had a vision of pagan treachery to come. I need no vision to remind me of their evil, but if the Builder has seen fit to send me one... We thank the Builder for all his gifts. So that gives us another new note. This is the side mission I was talking about that gave me my change of heart about the sapling. We have a note which says... The Hammers are trying to bury someone in the Old Quarter graveyard, but they can't as long as the zombies keep regenerating. Well, when we find the necromancer's hideout, his wand is worth 200 in gold, so I'll want to grab it, but grabbing his wand completes this side mission in favor of the hammer, so in the interest of balance, I decided it would be fun to, uh, 
plant the sapling for the pagans. Mine eyes say something is by. Oh my. I see. He eventually heads off down the hall. His friend walks a very short patrol up here. We need to get past him to grab a couple of holy waters, which are one of only two spots inside Fort Ironwood that I think are actually difficult to sneak through. And even this isn't difficult, it's just tough to, it's very tough to avoid a green alert, that's all. As you can see, what he's going to start doing is just walking back and forth right there. Achoo. So I'll take a greed alert. I haven't managed to avoid one yet. I'm sure it's possible, but... Brethren, this water, blessed by the builder, is for thy use. Tis the job of the novices to replenish thy supply when it doth run low. Shouldst thou find it empty, speaks to thou to brother Kai, the master of novices. Fair enough. Let's grab the two holy waters. And let's get clear of this guy again. Uh-oh. Tis for nothing. I need to wait for this guy to head off down the hall again, and then I'm going to tackle the graveyard. So run past him on this conveniently located carpet, and you should be able to just drop in here. At the moment there are two zombies in the graveyard. On top of that, here is the one cornerstone inside Fort Ironwood. It's the third old quarter cornerstone. It's the twelfth cornerstone overall, and it's the last one we have access to for now. Here in the northeast corner, we can find a silver nugget worth 100. And it's quite possible to sneak past the zombies. So I'm gonna do it. <clears throat> Even though it's really not necessary. It's just a matter of good timing. Now, there are a couple of little notes to read and Past both of them, all that's over there is one water arrow. But here we have the Cataclysm Memorial in memory of the hundreds lost in that historic catastrophe. And I might... I might just have to read the other gravestone later. It's harder to get to, but here where all this water's dripping down, surprise, surprise, is another water arrow. We're very well hidden in here, which is good. We can just wait for both of their backs to turn, and then we can actually pretty well run. But let's read this gravestone. Penelope Oddbody, may you find the peace in death that you never found in life. Again? What be there? I'll take a green alert. Well, no, I won't. Thought I could run on grass without triggering any green alerts, but I guess it either isn't grass or I'm wrong about that. You saw what was written on Miss Oddbody's tombstone. 
get back to here. If we wall flatten here, we're pretty well hidden. And we just need to wait for a good window where everyone's back is turned. Dang it. I don't know which one spotted me. Okay. I do need to move a little bit faster than that, but... Trust me, this... This isn't as hard as it looks. As Well, it, it probably doesn't even look hard. It probably just looks like I'm screwing up. The point is, this isn't hard. So... That wasn't a green alert, so... Since this is a safe spot, I'll go ahead and quick save here. Even if it feels a little tense with a zombie standing right there. Oh, damn. I knew I had a good window, but I got stuck on the gravestone that's kind of hiding inside those bushes. gonna say that sounded like another green alert the cataclysm memorial doesn't work quite as well as hardcover as it ought to there we go Now we need to get over here to the base of the stairs, a little shadow I hid in once before, and we need to climb all the way up the wall to where you can see that plume of smoke. Up here are a few things of note. First is the one rust mite in Fort Ironwood. That is the, should be the second rust mite in Old Quarter, and the eleventh rust mite overall, if you've been following me. On top of this barrel are two jade goblets, 75 each, and inside the furnace is a fire arrow. That's it, I'm gonna creep back down the same way I crept up, or climbed, I should say. It's not exactly creeping. This is a pretty good place to watch the Hammerite, see what he's up to. And we've actually got him pretty well timed, because we want to <laughs> climb back up into that hallway behind him to get out of the graveyard and back into the main fort. So, with that done, we've handled the graveyard. Let's read this note. Attention, zombies art about. Keepeth this door closed and locked at all times, Brother Archibald. No, in your heart, you were never truly pagan. How could you be? And I've told the Hammerites, you died trying to help a child out of a collapsing building. So, <clears throat> let's open this door. We have to time it because the hammers are hostile to us, remember. Now there's one Hammerite who walks a circle around this room, clockwise. And there's also the priest over there, who we have to be wary of. I'm gonna wait for a good chance to get out to the main room. Well, no, I'm not. First things first, I just want to grab the holy water off of that table and I want to read the note on the table. So, 
Get the water, read the note. Brother Severance, "'Twould be much appreciated if thou wouldst advise us on a matter that hast arisen here. A devout woman hast come to us and asked if her brother might be buried in our sacred burial ground. To this we readily agreed, as the woman dost come to services every day. But no sooner didst we attempt the burial, when a plague of undead didst set upon us. Twas so many that we didst retreat to the safety of the chapel. After gathering forces anew, we smote the zombies, and right well. Yet each time we fell these putrid foes, a new wave of them dost arise from the ground. Tis a curse of some kind, to be sure. If thou hast some advice, then I pray thee, bring it forth soon, Brother Archibald. Oh, Alfred. Why? Why? So? Why couldn't it have been me who died? How can I go on without my dearest Careful, brother? Careful, wretch. So with that done, I have a pretty good opening to get down to the main chamber, which is what I want to do next. Now we can pretty easily creep up behind this woman and get the two silver candlesticks off of the casket here. Worth 50 each. Very nice. And we want to head up these stairs and watch for an opening to get in behind the priest up on the the podium altar area. Our needs must I work on the sermon. Just fine as is, but fine is not worthy of the builder. Needs must it be. Someone has taken my wand. Tis unacceptable. The builder blesses even the humble. I like to grab his wand, of course. Now there are a couple of little things to get up here. I want to make sure not to accidentally pick up the bowl because it's junk. But inside the bowl are three copper coins we'll want to take. 25 each. And you'll also have probably already spied the bottle of wine inside the podium. Uh oh. So sorry I rushed to that without talking about it, but it just turned out to be very good timing. Uh, once you get the wine bottle, that's it for the main area. So you want to get to the other door, the eastern door, and that'll take us down to the catacombs. There are three hammer haunts down here, not two. They are still the only ones in the entire game. The catacombs are fun, there are a lot of little easter eggs in them. This one, not so much, but... You read it, it's Mortar Dalius Comstock. This first room, just a zombie patrolling. The back coffin has a ruby goblet on top of it, worth a hundred. The zombie's uh, direction is unpredictable, so all you can really do is get in behind him. Apologies, viewers. I thought he moved farther down that hallway than it turns out he does. So we'll get back to the entrance shadow. I'll just wait here to see which way he turns out of that door. Regardless of which way he goes, I want to get in behind him and head south. Well, once we're in here, we're pretty well set. Under this grate, we may find a water arrow. This, in memory of Lady Olivia Bafford, sister to Lord Bafford, beloved of many, Ah, uh, good old Baffy. Around Olivia Bafford's coffin, you can find two silver statuettes worth 50 each. Then we'll want to head west. There's a zombie, and you might hear the sound of rattling chains. 
It's one of my favorite monsters. There he is, the hammer haunt. Move in when both their backs are turned. Head to this southern room first. Inside here, you can find a golden dagger on the shelf, and you'll want to pick this chest open. Do it quickly. Oh, if only I could remember. Up and right. Down. Up and left. Down and right. Up. Down and left. Once it's unlocked, get back to the shadow and wall flatten. They finally gave the hammer, hammer haunts hammers instead of swords. I always thought that was a great oversight in the first two games that I'm glad they finally fixed. So when he's safely away, open the chest. Three broadhead arrows. Nothing too exciting. Then you'll actually want to follow him inside this room. Here lies E. Dowerty, died in his sleep. Just follow him counterclockwise. We'll head in there next. We've got one other thing to get first. Right here, we have, here lies the mortal remains of Talia Ingram. Well, okay. Inside this furnace is another fire arrow. Apart from that, it's safest to just keep following the haunt in his little s circle. Dang. I thought the zombie's back was turned, but I was wrong. So wait until the zombie's back is turned. Not right now, in other words. There we go. Now you want to head north. We can't access this storeroom until after the next mission. So what we're going to want to do is just get down. There are two zombies patrolling the area below us. And there are two things we need to get as well. So I prefer to just watch the zombies and head down as we have a good opportunity. Get to a hiding spot. This should be good. When his back is turned, head out. Morsey Blander, architect. May his troubles be over. Get the map out of his coffin. Dang it. I had a feeling I'd been too slow. There we go, we've got the map. Now we need to get over to the northwest corner without alerting either zombie. And it's really just a matter of waiting patiently for the right timing to move from shadow to shadow. I was trying to creep out far enough to use the pillar as hardcover for the zombie by Blander's coffin, but I moved too far out and got spotted by the other one. So it goes.
When his back is turned, you want to get to this corner, grab the gold nugget worth 150. I, there's not really any need to read the plaque on that coffin, but it is just a little tie-in to the first game. Which I enjoy, so... Let's try it again. Let's just... Wait for a better moment. This is the grave of Samuel Quintus. Died in a brothel and brought shame to his family. So you may remember the third mission in Thief Gold, or Thief the Dark Project, was down in the Bone Horde, where we were searching for the Horn of Quintus in the tombs of the noble Quintus family. Apparently, Samuel Quintus was not buried with the rest of his family because he died in a brothel and brought them shame. Yeah, I figured. I get so excited when one turns its back, I try to advance, even if it's a bad idea. I just need to be patient and wait until... Both of them have their backs turned. And I need to get to that northern door. Like now. When you get out the door, grab the silver candlestick on the table. It's worth another 50. And hopefully the patrolling haunt won't see you. He didn't see me. Here lies Bernard Farkas, murdered in cold blood before his time, beloved brother of Emily and Clive. If you remember the fourth mission in the first game, Assassins, the proprietor of a store named Farkas Functionals, was killed by the guys trying to murder Garrett. There he lies. And just up the stairs from him, Ramirez loved his burricks. Ramirez was the one who ordered the hit on Garrett, whose mansion we ended up robbing. He kept pet burricks in the basement. I love the little tie-ins to the first game. Absolutely love them. There's the game's second hammer haunt. One of three. Woefully underused. They only appear in the Fort Ironwood catacombs. And they're the best monster in the game, if you ask me. Well... No, the Shalebridge inmates might be better, but I love the haunts. 